like you don't know where to start when it comes to swimming faster. Like there's too many things to think about. So you end up thinking of five or six or seven different things at once and you just get confused. In this video, I'm gonna show you the order of the things you can work on in order to be swimming faster and making it much more enjoyable so that things are simplified for you. So this is our five core principles that we developed a couple of years ago that gives you the structure in order to know what do I focus on, where do I start? We're gonna take a look at Sharon Brandon Wendell here, who's a previous gold medalist in the Olympic 10K uh, and the recent gold medalist in the 10 kilometer swim at the World Champs. So we're gonna take a look at her stroke. She posted this video on her Instagram recently. So I thought this is a great example of really nice freestyle to go through. So let's take a look. The first core principle of our five core principles of fast freestyle is breathe deep and relax. Now breathing deep, it doesn't mean you take this huge gasp of air where you breathe as much in as you can because that leads you to gasping for air. So we wanna take a, a normal breath in, but we don't wanna do it where we're very shallow, where we feel like we're just filling up the top of our lungs. We wanna try and feel like it's a deeper breath. And the other part of the breathe deep and relax is exhaling the right way. And a good exhale will typically come from the nose or primarily from the nose. So if we zoom in here, have a look at Sharon's exhale, you'll see she gets her breath and she's looking to the side at that point. She's not looking up to the ceiling or the sky. Then as she comes back in, you can see this little trickle of air through her nose as she is swimming there. So we'll normally see this little bit of exhale coming from the nose. And then just before you turn to take the next breath is when we want this bigger exhale. That's where you clear the lungs as you're turning your head. Because if you release all of your air straight away, let's say she breathed out fully here, then there's gonna be about half a second or more where she's got very little air in the lungs. So you don't wanna breathe in and then exhale straight away, unless maybe you're breathing every two strokes uh, or you, you just got a very fast stroke rate. We wanna make sure that we're holding on to the air, maybe a light trickle of air through the nose, maybe a bit through the mouth, but then as you turn the head, that's when we want the bigger exhale. So that's breathe deep and relax. That's the first thing we wanna start with because if you are breathing short and shallow and you're panicked in the water, you're going to be limited with what else you can achieve in the stroke. So we always wanna start with breathing. And we just released our beginner freestyle course a couple of weeks ago. And the first thing we start with there is just being able to relax and breathe normally at the right tempo and, and cadence so that you can be comfortable in the water. Second core principle is finding your balance. Now, finding your balance means getting a good body line or body position. We look for three touch points of the head, hips and heels at the surface of the water, which you can see there. So she's got this really nice body line where she's essentially horizontal in the water, which is one of the key things you need to do to swim faster. Because if your hips and legs are dropping down too much, let's say she was down there, the increase in drag that that would create is gonna make it very difficult for her to achieve much speed without a lot of effort to overcome that drag. So we wanna get this good body line. Now, a few elements of that is, first of all, the right posture and head position. We like to teach zero to 45 degrees, so eyes looking somewhere in that range. Sharon being primarily an open water swimmer, you'll see she's looking in that upper range there but still within that zero to 45. So I think that's a really good head position for most of the adult swimmers and triathletes that I work with. The other thing I really like here with Sharon's stroke is have a look at her posture and head position. She's quite long through the neck. You can imagine like she's getting rid of all the wrinkles on the back of her neck there. And there's this really nice line through her torso and her head. Like there's a very slight upward angle there. And it means that she's got this nice tautness through the core where she's sort of switched on through the, the middle of her body uh, and probably engaging the, the hips or the glutes a little bit too where there's this nice tall and proud posture long neck eyes in the right position and that helps you hold that body line one of the things that we see quite often uh, with swimmers who are less experienced is they are hunched over their chin comes up and comes forwards and then their hips wriggle around a lot if you can learn to hold your body the right way and it takes a bit of practice and it requires a, you know, a decent amount of sort of core strength in a way to be able to maintain that over longer distances. But if you can hold your body the right way, then that's kind of the foundation of moving well in the water because 
in freestyle or in swimming, you need to swim from the inside out. So everything comes from holding your, yourself correctly through here. Then you can start to deliver the, the power through the extremities of your legs and through your arms. But if this is loose, if this is moving around a lot and you're not holding the body correctly, then you're not going to achieve the sort of speed that you probably want to achieve. The other part of finding your balance is having an effective kick. Now, a lot of the athletes that I work with are triathletes who don't often have great range of motion through the ankles and through the feet. So we want to work within, our, within your capabilities. But what I see as being an effective kick is, is a couple of key points here. So the first one is we want the heels to be breaking the surface. As you can see here with Sharon, those heels are just breaking the surface. That usually means that you're kicking, uh, kicking high enough or the legs are high enough. The other thing that's important is we want the toes to be pointing behind you. So if we zoom in here, you'll see toes are pointed to that back wall. And you could almost imagine those toes are painting the wall behind her. So in the, in the downward kick, if you're looking at this, this foot here, you'll see in this downwards motion, okay, it's like she's painting the wall, flick, she gets this flick down with the foot there. You can't really see it, sorry. Bring it back a second. All right, so she gets this nice flick down of the foot, and that's what a good kick is on the downwards motion. It's this nice flick of the foot. And then on the upward motion, she's still pointing the toes pretty well. They're still pointing behind her they're not pointing down here. Now it doesn't look like you know, that much of a difference if her foot was say here, but that's gonna increase the drag in a huge way if your toes are pointed down there because that oncoming water is gonna hit and that's gonna cause your body position to drop as well. So toes pointed. The other thing that I consider here is how big is the kick? And I like to imagine you've got this bucket out behind you and you're keeping your feet in that bucket as you kick. And in our Effortless Swimming membership, we just uh, added our cues and misconceptions training videos. And some of the cues that we look at there are like cues are something that you can just think of or a phrase or a, a trigger word that's gonna help you make a change to a certain part of your stroke. And one of those cues is ballerina in a bucket. If you think of yourself as a ballerina on your tippy toes, that ballerina is kicking inside a bucket. That is a great way to remember how you want your feet to be moving so that you're kicking effectively. Now, if you are doing triathlon, you do not need to be kicking hard, but you do want to be kicking effectively. So you don't want it to slow you down. So that is the second core principle is finding your balance. Now, the third core principle is rock, return, and align. Rock, we mean your rotation. So we don't want to roll all the way onto our side. We just want to be rocking side to side, going to about 35 to 40 degrees side to side rather than 90 degrees. Now you'll see here with Sharon, we don't have that front on view, but here I would imagine if we were looking front on, she's probably around that 35, maybe 40 degrees through the hips and through the shoulders here. So you can see she's, she's going side to side, but she's not going so far where she's getting to 90 degrees there. So that's where most swimmers are best off. Yes, you want that rotation, but it's possible to go too far. And that's when we see people losing balance, losing stability, and sometimes that impacts their catch. The return aspect of rock return align is the recovery. So your recovery is when your arm comes over the water and we consider that to be a recovery because you want your hand to be relaxed over the top. You'll notice with Sharon here, her hand is quite relaxed over the top, so is her forearm, which is great. That's exactly how you should come over the water to make it a relaxed recovery and to be able to come over the right way. Now, the reason we call it returning rather than recovery in this core principle is you wanna bring the arm over the top to carry some momentum through and land it in the water so you get a bit of momentum going forwards here. Now, I'm gonna put this in normal speed so you can see Sharon's recovery. So she carries that momentum really well over the top. So she's returning that hand and that arm forwards, getting it in line with her shoulder and extending forward so she's carrying that momentum over the top because sometimes we see people come over and they just sort of place their arm on top and they lose that momentum they don't carry it forwards so Sharon does this really really well and the last part of this core principle is a line and what we mean by a line is that when you do return your arm over the top you should be entering in line with your shoulder or your ear so we want to avoid too much crossover being too wide we want to align with our shoulders or our ears 
every time that we enter the water. Now, the fourth core principle is developing an effective catch and pull. And I know many of the people who watch these videos have done the five day catch challenge. And if you've done that, you'll have a good understanding of what we want to achieve there. If you haven't, I'll put the link below to that five day catch challenge. It'll take you through each aspect of it. But with an effective catch and pull, a few things that I look for is when you enter and extend forwards, we wanna to get to the start of the catch. And I'd consider this to be the start of the catch where we got fingers below wrist, wrist below elbow, and the arm or the hand is about underarm depth there. So you're basically straight out in front. That's a great position to start the catch because you can see that is a really streamlined and efficient position to be in. Sometimes we see people going very deep there. So they'll enter and when they finish reaching forwards, they're down there. I wouldn't normally train or coach people to, to go there because you do see the best swimmers getting to that position. So we like to go for shoulder depth. The next part of the stroke is the, is the movement of the catch. And what we wanna to work towards for most people is a high elbow catch position. And that means it's more like elbow forwards. So don't think high elbow means elbow should be way up here near the surface in some awkward position. We think of that as when you are here in the stroke, if we draw a line from your shoulder to your fingertips, if your elbow is above that line, that is a high elbow catch. And the reason that's a good position is because your hand and forearm is angled in a way that's more pressing back rather than pressing downwards which we see with a what we consider a dropped elbow catch. So that's a high elbow catch. It's more like elbow forwards. So you don't need to be really shallow with it. And one thing I noticed here is well, I did an analysis on Sharon Stroke probably two years ago now when she posted a previous video. Here she's getting less of an extreme high elbow catch as in she's actually going a little bit deeper than in a previous video I saw of her where she was like, she was way up here. And the thing with that is like up here, it's quite awkward. It's a, it can be quite a bit of strain on the shoulder. So this slightly deeper position, and I'd say you know, more, uh, not natural necessarily, but more comfortable position is gonna be so much more sustainable over that longer distance of, of 10K. So it's good to see the, you know, the arms going down that bit deeper than where she was, because I would imagine with like, I know she's been doing 80, 90, 100K weeks at times from what I've seen. Uh, it's yeah, this is gonna be so much more sustainable. So that's our high elbow catch. The other part that we sort of look for, and you can't really see it from this angle, is we want a good power diamond. Now this is a term I came up with after talking to a number of different coaches of when your hand comes underneath your shoulder here, this is when we wanna have this, it's like a half diamond shape. Now we don't have the front on view here, but what we will typically see is the shoulder, elbow and hand aligned or, or close to it aligned at that point because all that surface area of her arm, hand, forearm, that's pressing back at that point. That's angling back in that direction. You're gonna get a really good hold of the water. Typically, people who aren't holding the water very well, it's like a continuation of a dropped elbow catch. Their upper arm's here, the forearm and hand is here where it's mostly pressing down. So if you can get a good power diamond, which is shoulder, elbow, hand, mostly aligned underneath you. And if we're looking front on, it'd look like this half diamond shape with the arm. So the elbows out to the side, the fingers are pointing down. Then you're very strong in that position and you've set yourself up well. If you think of pulling yourself out of the pool, if you're like up against the, the wall, you're not gonna do it with, maybe you're not gonna do it with straight arms. You're not going to do it with your like elbows up here or up here. You're going to do it like this. That's your power diamond. That's why it's called the power diamond because that is where you're going to be most powerful through the stroke. The other part of the uh, catch and pull that we look at is the exit. And we want to exit just past the hip. Now the very last core principle is finding your rhythm and timing. And when I work on this with people, we kind of work on the kick and catch timing uh, as, as one element of this. Often this is something that can be frustrating initially to get right and to coordinate. But the feedback that I get is that once someone gets it, their times are quicker, they feel like they're swimming so much easier for a better pace, uh, and things really come together this way. But it can certainly take some practice. Now, in terms of the timing of the stroke, there's two ways to think of your, of your timing with your kick and your catch. One way is your catch should go with your down kick on the same side. So Sharon's right arm catch and her right foot kicks down at the same time there. All right, so that's one way to think of it. 
The other way you can think of it is that we want the entry, let's see if we can get this here, the entry and the opposite foot kicking. So you can see here that when Sharon kicks down, let's have a look at her left arm there. Okay, so there, so her left hand enters and her right foot kicks down. So left hand has entered there, right foot is kicking down. As you can see there. So that's the other way to think of it. Both correct, just depends on what works best for you. I've found about 50% of people like kick and catch on the same side, 50% of the people like going opposite foot and hand on, on entry there. So just see what feels best for you, what works best for you. Uh, that's, yeah, just really depends on the person. But when you do get that, everything works together because the way that I, that I see it here is that when you kick down with your foot, so when the right foot kicks down, sort of sends this energy through to the hip, gives you something to stabilize with. Then you feel like as you're pulling through, you've got something to kind of anchor against or pull against as you pull through there. Whereas if your feet are just sort of hanging there and it's just your arms moving and there's no kick, there's no movement of the feet at the, at the back, you don't have that stability or ability to sort of anchor with something. So it can feel like you're just pulling through the water rather than anchoring yourself and then driving the body past this part here. So they are the five core principles of fast freestyle. And I've used these to analyze and help more than six and a half thousand people in the last seven years. We've had a lot of people come to our clinics and our camps and I work with online. And this is what makes them enjoy their swimming so much more because it simplifies things and it helps them not only swim faster, but do it for less effort, making their swimming feel more effortless, which is the goal. Certainly takes time and practice to get to effortless, but with the right structure, that's when I find you can really have those good results. And if you wanna change the way you swim and place higher in the swims that you're having or get more out of the time that you're putting into your training at the moment, check out our Effortless Swimming membership where we've got the five core principles of fast freestyle training videos in there with drills, with exercises to help you improve on each of these things. And it goes into detail into what you can do to develop each of these five things. So I'll put the link below Click on that, there's a 14 day trial, so try it out. I promise you, you will get results by going through these things. And I'm in there answering questions on a daily basis as well.